No, no other uh, announcements, then we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we gather in your house today that we may glorify your mighty name. We come to praise you. We come to worship you. We come to fellowship and friendship. Draw near to us, Lord, and help us to draw near to you. Father, bless this time. Bless this worship. And bless each person here. May your spirit abound with us. And may we feel your presence in this place. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 All right. Lighting of the Advent wreath. Do I have a family that would like to uh, light the first candle, the candle of hope? All right. Yes. All right. Here you go. Just like this one here. All right. Advent is the beginning of the Christmas season. It means the arrival. And today is the advent of hope. Hope represents so much of what we expect in Jesus. God called him Emmanuel, which means God with us. He's the promised one that God would be among us. And so we worship the Lord Jesus, who is our Emmanuel, God with us, our hope. Let us pray. Almighty God, may your hope continue to plant a seed within every heart. May it build and strengthen and grow in us that we may have encouragement, courage to overcome, to be strengthened, and to see us through until that day we are with you. In your glorious home. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Our first, uh, if you would, stand as you are able for our call to worship found in your bulletin. You alone, O Lord, are God. Amen. You have done wonderful things in the past. Come down, Lord God. We need you here with us now. Come down, Lord God. We wait for you. We wait for you, Lord. Amen. 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 Our first song today is, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. All right. All right. Let us pray. Holy Heavenly Father, we come before you not in our name, not by any power we have, not by anything we've done, not by the gifts we bring, not by any of those things, Father. We come only and solely in the name of Jesus Christ, by His power and the power of His name, by the power of His blood. We come as the body of Christ to pray over those whom we've lifted up in our hearts. Father, we pray for healing for them. For there are many among us who are sick and affirmed from either COVID or cancer, from all types of ailments, Lord. And only you, Lord, the great physician, can heal them. And so, Father, we ask on their behalf for healing. Complete healing by faith. According to their faith, let it be done. Father, there are those among us who are mourning the loss. They need your mercy. They need your touch. They need your comfort. Only you, Father, can heal a soul that is mourning. Only you, Father, can comfort the heart that is broken. And so for our brothers and sisters who are experiencing loss, we lift them into your caring hands. Father, there are those among us who are struggling to find provision, work. And so, Father, we ask that you would open a door for them to find the work that they need and that their daily bread would be provided. We ask all these things in Jesus' mighty name and we pray as he taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Emmanuel, Emmanuel is our prayer song today.
with me in the offering prayer found in your bulletin. And if you'd like to leave an offering, we want to encourage you. If you are listening on the radio, we want to encourage you that uh, please to mail it in uh, or drop it off at the church at your earliest convenience. If you'd like to leave an offering, please leave it after the service. We're still not passing things around. Being careful. Let us pray. Generous and loving God, you give us everything we need, surrounded and supported by your love. There is nothing we lack as we bring our offerings to you. May they support your work of peace and justice and bring hope to the world as we bring our very selves to you. Mold and shape us as you will, then send us forth to this earth. Amen. Amen. So the children's sermon was that hope floats and I have a bottle of water and I was going to show them the air bubble. No matter how much you twist or turn or shake it, the water cannot overcome that air bubble. And it's the same with hope. When we have hope in God and in Christ, nothing can overcome it. Let us pray. Almighty God, as we hear your word today, may you strengthen us, build us up, encourage us. And fill us with that hope. A hope that plants a seed in our heart that grows forth large and strong. A hope that overcomes all. A hope that one day will be confirmed when our faith becomes seen. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So today, uh, as you can tell, we're going to talk about hope. Hope is the first Sunday at Advent. Hope and faith are something uh, connected. Hope, faith, and trust. It, it's kind of like a triangle. They're all connected. You can't really have one without the other. When God said to the prophets, I'm going to do this, guess what? They had faith. They had hope. They had trust. Hope, faith, and trust are something that we uh, that are connected together when we look at God. Because God has given us all of these promises and encouraged us and put in our hearts these things. And so He desires to fill us with hope, faith, and trust. In him, And so as he does the things he does in our lives, as we pray and we see that our prayers are confirmed by action, uh, whatever our, our issue was, was overcome or God had supplied it in some way. That's supposed to build up encouragement and trust and hope. Just like a, if you take a bubbling brook. A, a, a small stream and you look at a mountain and you tell someone that small stream could break that mountain. Most people would look at you like you were crazy. But in truth, that is exactly what happens. That small stream continues to push forward. And as it pushes forward, it conquers the rock until it splits it. It freezes, it expands, it splits the rock until one day that mountain will crumble into the sea from a small stream of water. And God wants to give us a hope that's like that. A hope that is living water that continues to flow. Continues to flow. And that can overcome any of the greatest 
obstacles in this world. Our first scripture today comes from Jeremiah 2.13. Now Jeremiah was called the weeping prophet. He was called the weeping prophet because under Jeremiah, uh, Israel was going to be destroyed. And uh, what was remaining, the people that were remaining, were going to be taken into captivity for the next 70 years. And so he was called the weeping prophet because he weeped at every town. He went to pray and he weeped because he knew what was going to happen. He, God said it and it was going to come to pass. But there's something interesting here I want to look at. It says in verse 13, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fount of living water. And they have dug their own cistern, broken cisterns, that cannot hold water. Amen. They have forsaken me, the fount of living water. This living water, this idea, you see it through the Old Testament. God refers to Himself as living water. And guess who also refers to themselves as living water? Jesus refers to Himself as living water. Jesus, the fount of living water that came to give life. In Jeremiah 17, 13 through 14, He said this, O Lord, the hope of Israel, all who abandoned you will be put to shame. All who turn away will be written in the dust. For they have abandoned the Lord, the fountain of living water. Heal me, O Lord, and I will be healed. Save me, and I will be saved. For you are my praise. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. You see, uh, the people of Israel had hoped for a Messiah. A king that would come and create a military conquest and Israeli supremacy in the world. That's what they were looking for. But God had intended something completely else. Something completely different. He wasn't just sending a king. He wasn't just sending a prophet. He was sending His Son. God with us. Emmanuel. That He may save the whole world. Not just one little country. Not just one nation. But all nations called unto Himself to be a part of His kingdom. And so, this idea of Christ coming to be with us, His life may seem like uh, it wasn't successful. How can you conquer the world with love? But just like He said, that He is the fount of living water. Just like a small brook splits a mountain, the love of God has been splitting the rocks and the hearts of men throughout the centuries, giving us hope, helping us to trust Him, and increasing our faith. John, John, uh, John 7, uh, John chapter 4, verse 9 through 4, Jesus encounters a woman at the well, a Samaritan woman. And the Jews didn't like the Samaritans because they thought they were inbred. And uh, apparently they believed that uh, they had added to the law that God had given Moses and so on. And so there was this feud among the Samaritans. So Jews did not associate with Samaritans. They didn't touch them. They didn't go around them. They, they would, in fact, uh, no self-respecting Jew would even cross their country because they didn't even want sand, the sand that's in their town, on their feet. That's how much they did not like Samaritans. But here we see this scene in John chapter 4, verse 9 through 14. And <clears throat> the woman responding to Jesus when Jesus asked her for something to drink, he said, You are a Jew, said the woman. How can you ask for a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For the Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered, If you knew the gift of God and who was asking you for a drink, you would have asked Him, and He would have given you living water. Sir, the woman replied, 
You have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then will you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give will become in him a fount of water springing up to eternal life. Amen. Amen. So this idea of living water, this uh, water that moves, uh, a river, a brook, a stream, that's living water. It's not stagnant. It's not a pool of water, but it's water that is pure and clean because of its motion. But also, water represents life. Without water, there is no life. And so he's saying that if you drink from the water he gives, You'll have life, eternal life, that'll spring. Springs of living water will flow from within him. Here, at, the, at the, one of the last suppers here, at the last day of the, the, the feast, Jesus in chapter 7 of John 37 through 39 says, On the last day and the great day of the feast, Jesus stood up and called it out in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scriptures has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. Streams of living water will flow from within him. Jesus is trying to show that through him, the streams of, of life flow. Through him, all the hope of mankind is realized. Through him... Through Him, we have our strength, our hope, our faith, our trust, our love. It's through Him, Emmanuel, God with us, calling to all the world, giving them hope, hope that cannot be dissuaded by the things of this life. You know, you may read in today's headlines, of all the terrible things going on in the world, you may read the headlines and become pretty depressed about all that's going on. Yes, at times, life looks pretty hopeless. But if we keep our eye on the Lord Jesus Christ, we can find hope even in the midst of difficult circumstances. We can be comforted. As Paul wrote in the book of Romans, chapter 8, 31, uh, chapter verse 31, chapter 8, verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? God is for you. Through His love, you can find hope. And not just any kind of hope, but a hope that swells within you, that builds like a river builds and pours out through you into eternal life. Life forever. It's a hope that is continuing, that is reaffirming until, see, uh, until our hope becomes seeing and seeing and believing with our own eyes in that glorious day. Here's four reasons why you can remain hopeful in the midst of confusing circumstances. Four reasons. Jesus will win the final victory. Number one. Jesus will win the final victory. No matter how strong the enemy in our life seems, no matter how strong the, the addiction, the sin, whatever it is, no matter how strong the devil seems, Jesus wins the final victory. So we can have hope that no matter what is going on in our life, no matter what the midst uh, we may be facing in the midst of our lives, we can have hope because Jesus wins the final victory. I read a story about a janitor that was one time he was reading the book of Revelation. And uh, he was a janitor at a theological school and he was cleaning the gymnasium. And he had stopped to read the book of Revelation. And uh, as he was reading it, 
one of the, the uh, future pastors or future reverend or evangelist came by, one of the students, and he sat next to him. And he says, do you understand all the symbols and all the symbolism in the book of Revelation? And the man looked at him and he said, no. But I have figured out that Jesus wins in the end, and that's comforting. Amen. Amen. Jesus wins in the end. He has the final victory. Jesus told us these words to the Apostle John. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To him who is thirsty, I will give drink without cost and the springs of water of life. Revelation 21, 6. Number two, Jesus sets you free. Jesus sets you free. There are things in this world that may bind us down, but Jesus sets us free. He's a chain breaker. Whatever seems to ensnare us, Jesus sets us free. Jesus has the key to any lock that binds us. Jesus sets us free. Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. In Christ, you can hope. Because you have been set free from sin. You are set free to be all that God has desired you to be without the constraints of your past. You can know the meaning of an abundant life because, because of what Christ did on the cross. Though we didn't deserve it, Christ restored us and gave us a hope, hope and a future. Because we've been transformed from re rebels, from sinners, from the enemies of God, to the children of God. And so we have hope through Jesus Christ. He has set us free. Number three, there is no condemnation for those in Christ. The world may judge you because of your past. You may have made a mistake in the past. But God does not judge you. If you are in Christ, He does not judge you. He no longer sees your deeds. He only sees His Son, Jesus. When He looks at you, He sees a child that belongs to Him. He doesn't see a rebel or someone who is in rebellion against Him, who is evil. He sees His child. There is no condemnation for those in Christ. In Christ, you are a new creation. Romans 8 Verses 1 and 2 puts it best. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life set me free. From the law of sin and death. Even though we deserve death and spiritual separation from God, we have now a new beginning and eternal life in Jesus Christ. Talk about a reason to hope. Talk about a reason to hope. Though someone may bring up your past, they may judge you, they may not let you be that new person, but the only one that counts doesn't see you that way. God is the only one that counts, and He's not holding it against you. He's not remembering those deeds. He's not remembering the past. He only sees the new you in Jesus Christ. Number four, God's love transcends human understanding. With all of our mental faculties and all the strength and wisdom of man put together doesn't understand the depths of God's love. The love of God in Christ Jesus. It's so much there. When you search the scriptures to understand the love of God, it is unfathomable. How much God loves us. The fact that He's done everything possible to be with us. And for us to be with Him. Because God loves us, we are more than conquerors. Romans 8.37 Through Christ, God loves you and wants the best for you. His love gives you hope. Even in the bleakest of circumstances. There is a light always shining. And that light is the love of God. And in Him, and in that love, you can find hope. You know, if you ever want encouragement, read some of the martyr stories. 
Some of the martyrs, the great martyrs that had come before us, that faced unimaginable circumstances, imprisonment, torture, starvation. I read their bi uh, biographies and I read the synopsis of their lives and it's just amazing what they endured because they loved Christ. And no matter what came at them, their hope was secure in Christ. And in fact, in many instances, their torturers were converted through Christ. Just like that brook splits a mountain. It seems impossible. That brook can split a mountain. But the love of God splits the stony heart of man. And so this is a great reason to hope. The love of God. Finally, perhaps you're like me and you're making a list of all the things in this world you don't understand. And you're making that list to ask God on the other side of heaven and His kingdom as you stand before Him. And I don't think God would have a problem with that. When you encounter frustrations in this life and you find things you don't understand, share them with God. Share them with God and let God speak to your heart and reassure you. And secure your hope so that you won't be discouraged. God's big enough to handle any of the issues that you bring, any of the questions you may have. Then resolve to believe that God who is righteous will always do the right thing. In the midst of your life. And ultimately, ultimately. He wins in the end. He doesn't judge you or discriminate against you. He's given you a hope and a future with Him. And finally, His love overcomes, transcends, transforms all things. All a reason to hope in Christ Jesus, who is God with us, Emmanuel. He's our living water. It brings life into every area of our lives. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Holy Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. May you give us this water, this water of life, through your Son, Jesus, who is the fount of living water. Help us to drink deeply. And may it spur with the, within us life, and life eternal. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Our final song today is Come, Thou Long Expected Jesus.
conviction is this, as you go forth throughout this week, let hope do its amazing work in you. Hope is greater than any fear. Hope is greater than any pain. It can overcome anything if your hope is in the right place. Place your hope in Jesus Christ. And whatever good work your hand finds to do, may God bless it and prosper it. In the name of Jesus Christ, go in His peace. Amen. Amen. Have a great week, everybody.